back in action on Saturday here in Dallas. We're going to welcome in the ABCA third vice president, head coach of the University of Louisville, Dan McDonald. Mac, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Sheets. Glad to be here. It's awesome to have you. Now, interesting look, and only the camera would see this. If you're listening to the podcast, you don't know this, but he is head to toe, pinstriped up. Uni just came off the stage. Can you talk about your clinic you just got done? My coaches give me a hard time because they know anytime we speak anywhere, we want to be in uni. Yep. So that they know I'm a big fan of the uniform uh, as opposed to, I guess, business clothes. But uh, <laughs> it was neat. Opportunity to speak at the youth clinic. What's yep. the second year running? Yep. And, um, man, that's, that's the future of the game. No doubt. And I was just really psyched to try to pour into uh, young coaches, men and women, coaching, you know, 5, 8, 10, 12-year-olds and trying to encourage them, give them some tips as to hopefully help these kids love the game, grow in the game, yeah. get hooked on the game. And, and then we ended it with some drills and, you know, sure. some, some throwing drills, a little competition, a little base running. But it was, it was more of a philosophical, hey, man, you're in a powerful position as a coach. Right. And we need you to help these kids grow and love this game, and, and it only helps us. It's awesome. You know, obviously you're, you're hyper-focused on your program, and uh, we can go into the accolades of what you've done at the University level, which we'll get back to. But in preparation for that clinic, um, my guess would be there was a little bit of reflection, a little bit of growth moment, like, oh, wait a minute, I, I will have a stage. I will have, a, you know, the ability to speak directly to these coaches. Can you take me through that, that feeling? Well, it was, you know, look at my history as a coach, uh, college player, high school player, uh, amateur player and then as a dad I got right. to witness uh, my son my youngest son going through he's a junior in high yeah. school now how much I had learned you know better today than maybe when I was 23 sure. teaching little kids about the game so for me it was now at my age and and what I've experienced how can I help these coaches what what are the challenges they're facing right um, coaching eight-year-olds 10 or 12 and so I just Started with a piece of paper, wrote down from teamwork to adversity to fun at practices and games right. um, to, uh, you know, specialization, burnout, sure. Sure. Uh, love of the game, ambassador. So I just wrote down all these topics, had a few notes of each one that I thought parents, coaches could relate to. Yep. But then I know they, they really want drills. Yep. So I tried to end it. 15 minutes of, hey, let me give them a good base running drill at practice. Let me give them a good throwing drill. And, and everything I showed them on the screen is just like our camps, what we do with our players every day. I, I don't awesome. care if you're coaching 8-year-olds, 10, 12, 15. I'm coaching 20-year-olds. It starts with the fundamentals. Sure. Proper throwing, catching, fielding. I didn't do any of the offensive stuff, the hitting side. Yeah. But, you know, we, we, we want – coaches of the younger generation there's not that big a difference yeah i mean it's the game's the game we're not reinventing the wheel no doubt we're just trying to be very fundamental and if anything i think in our game it's it's the mindset That's that i wanted to address what are we doing up here where are we in our hearts yeah. how are we helping the game grow that's so good it's gave them some perspective gave them some takeaways Trying to make them better coach is pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's we all want to win. Uh, I'm sure that they coach because they love the game. And, yeah. and let's face it, we're competitive. We want to win. But, man, at that young age, th those kids, um, you know, most important, we want them to, to grow in the game and love the game. Right. I mean, if they're right. going to stay in this game of baseball, they're going to want to aspire to be a high school player or sure. college player or professional player. It's going to start when they're 8, 10, 12. That's right. And it's a challenge, you know. It's, there's competition with other sports. There's a lot of uh, media, social media distractions. No doubt. You know, how do we run our practices? What are we emphasizing in the games? Yeah. How do we handle failure? What do we do when we lose? Um, where have we made mistakes? We've all made mistakes with young kids. It's okay. Address yeah. it. Yeah. And what I didn't talk about enough of on the main stage and I did in the side room, I had a lot of, I had a lot of questions about parents. Of course. Yes. You know, and it, it's – you know, for me, 18 to 22-year-olds, I, I have a relationship. These kids are mature enough. I deal with them. Um, but at that youth age, you got to deal with the parents. That's right. And so you have to really coach up parents. You have to go over guidelines, and these are the team rules. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Even from a simple rule of if you're a parent and you're frustrated, 
after the game's not a best time to talk about Timing's it. everything. Yeah, yeah. I, let, let, let's have a rule where let's cool off, let's go home, let's yeah. set up a – let's have coffee tomorrow morning or lunch or right. something. Let's talk over the phone. But let's not talk after a game yeah. in a ballpark setting with your kid there and parents there. And yeah. so there were things I, I got to speak about in the side room that I didn't even share on the big stage. Sure. Oh, wow. Um, you know, this is a prelude to our conversation here in a few weeks. So if you're listening to this, again, convention uh, post wrap up recap episode, you'll be hearing from Dan here in a week or so, get him on the full podcast. So I don't want to go into too much, but you know, from uh, you, you know how much this hurts me as a member of big blue nation to stare at this Cardinal head. But what I love is that man, and you know, we've talked about this, man, I respect and admire what you've built there at Louisville. And, the, and I know the, the history of that program growing up an hour away, what you've been able to do since stepping on campus and, and really growing it into something special. I just think for guys standing here listening, can you talk about maybe the, the, uh, what you thought was important there that first year in 07 and then building up in terms of the culture and what it feels like and tastes like inside your program? Yeah, well, I mean, first, when we talk about the rivalry, I love the rivalry. There's a lot of respect. You know, one of my great friends yeah. is Coach Keith Madison. Yeah. So that, for me, was an – I say an easy transition into be mature about this rivalry. Sure. Let the fans get all hyped up and excited. <laughs> as, as they, they do. Yeah. yeah. And, and I love it. That's what we love. That, yeah. That's why four or 5,000 come out when we play each other. Every time. Um, but, you know, for, for me with inside the program, you said the word culture. Mm. It's the sexy word in athletics. It is. Um, it starts with the student athletes. Uh, for me it was – Let's pour into them. Yep. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us, we, we get these jobs because we're recruiters. And the fear is sometimes, well, he's going to recruit his own kids. Sure. And, no, I, I wanted to make sure that first group that we inherited, and we inherited a great group from yep. Lalo Prado, uh, let's, let's help these kids. This is their time, their experience. And I say it every year, and it, it's so true. They have a small window, three or four years. Right. It's not about me. I, I hope I've been coaching 27 years. I, I hope to coach maybe another 27, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. But they have a small window. It's about them. Sure. You have to make it about them. The FCA breakfast this morning, Coach Deggs was awesome. He said some real things that hit you right in the chest, you no know. Doubt. Like it's, it's about these players, and, and these players, we need them more so than they mm. even need us. And yeah. And how much we love this game and we love to, you know, we don't really call this work. We right. love our job, if you call it a job. Uh, so pour into the kids. Let them know you're here for them. Then get them to work their tail off yep. and get them to believe. We talked mm -hmm. about the mental side. Mm -hmm. And so that first year was let's just get to a regional and let's uh, – this is how you get to a regional. And they were talented. They bought in. And, you know, when you get to a regional, anything can happen. No doubt. And we had that magical run to Omaha – and that just, boy, that just, that was the springboard. That set the tone. Sure so did. now everything we were saying to recruits, to parents, everybody knew, I guess we were for real. It, it wasn't just a pipe dream. And we've kept that momentum. So I give so much credit to that 07 team. Mm -hmm. they, they laid the, the groundation. They, they set the tone. And it's been a great, my gosh, 12 years have flown by. But, um, you know, we're dealing with all those great Kentucky kids, uh, southern Indiana right over the bridge, and yep. then, you know, we're, we're that hopefully southern home for <laughs> Midwest kids. No Ohio, doubt. Indiana, Illinois, Missouri, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Minnesota. You know, we always say we're not Miami, <laughs> but we're in the south. We're close. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're in the south. Kentucky's a southern state. So That's right. So come south, and uh, if this is what you want, uh, out of your experience, this is who we are. And, and yeah. so we, we've been successful academically. We preach the degree. We've been successful in player development. Um, let's face it, that's what kids want. No they doubt. want to get better. And then we preach team success. If, yeah. you know, playing in the regionals or going to Omaha or winning a national championship is something you want to aspire, try to achieve as a player, we think, we think our program's a good fit for you. No doubt. Well, it's obvious. You mentioned right in the middle of that. Uh, coming in with a mindset that this is about the players, it's about this team. Uh, honestly, I think you did as good a job as anybody is wrapping your arms around that first group. And, again, being privy to more information than most, man, being great friends with Aaron Gershenfeld and Skylar Mead and those guys and getting the behind-the-curtain view of, of what was going on and obviously what's transpired since. Um, I want to go back to that, and it's probably something we'll talk about more in depth on the podcast is just that um, 
the mindset of being transformational and relational, and I know it's a huge piece, the kids are at your house, you know, periodically throughout the year, and that's a big piece of, of the integration of your family into the program. Has that always been there? Is that something that you matured and morphed into, as most coaches do, you know? Yeah, I spent 12 years at a military college at the Citadel, so yeah. you, you had to learn how to connect you had, to, you had to love on kids and let kids had to trust you. If they were going to go to a military school, no they doubt. had to trust you. I spent six years with Mike Bianco uh, at Ole Miss, and, and, you know, he calls it the Skip Burtman system. Yeah. Uh, what a blessing. Yeah. I, got, I got inside information, you know, as to – The blueprint. That's right. And I took that system uh, to Louisville. And, you know, for me as a Christian, you know, what's at the premise of our belief? Yeah. Love. You got to love and just love on these kids. You know, and the, the one thing you love about baseball players, I know you can't fool them. Never. No, I, <laughs> I, I tell these kids all the time. And th- they can't fool themselves. Yeah. They cannot fool their teammates. No doubt. Uh, and as coaches, man, you, you can't fool them. Mm. These kids are, are smart. So just be who you are. You don't have to be perfect. Uh, be real. And uh, we learned a lot from each other. That I had yeah. nine seniors on that team. Uh, special group. Special group. They, they they hold a special place in my heart because I don't I don't know if I'm sitting here today if it weren't for that Ooh. that that group of nine seniors that bought in. And then I, we had a lot of young talent too, the Justin yeah. Marks and the Chris Dominguez's and Not bad. some really good young players uh, that we inherited. Um, but as you know, I mean, I, I get a lot of credit and. You get this mention, I took him to Omaha or whatever. And, you know, it's very humbling because you realize, wait a second, man. This, no doubt. This is, a, this is an, uh, an army of people. You, you didn't know, throw it, one pitch, didn't take one at bat. No, back. <laughs> no. I, this, is, uh, this is your entire coaching staff. Yep. This is the administration. This is the support staff. I'm, you know, I, I think our coaches and support staff appreciate uh, – what we are and, 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 and what we're about, but I, I, I demand a lot from them. Sure you do. I mean, they, they, they're the reason. I mean, yeah. our 15 straight semesters of a team GPA over 3.0, I'm, wow. not, I'm not the one at study hall. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not the one. I, I check classes <laughs> once in a while, but it, it's our academic support staff. That's right. Now, you have to ask them or demand that from them. You know, I don't coach the hitters. That was Coach Limonis, and mm-hmm. that's been Coach Snyder. Yep. And, and, and the other guys that have helped, and, you know, I've had one pitching coach, Coach Williams, for absolutely going on 13 years. One and of the best in the game. That's it. You know, yeah. so, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, I used to say you win in life with people. Mm-hmm. And probably, I don't know, it might be five years now, but it's at least three or four. You win in life with the right people. There you go. And I think that's the key to success. If you talk about culture – you got to surround yourself with the right people. Right. You can't do this by yourself. I, we're in an age of head coach responsibility, yep. and I get it, and uh, CEO responsibility, and we got to be able to point the finger to somebody. That's right. Uh, and so, like anything else, we probably get too much blame when something goes wrong, mm-hmm. and we get too much credit when well things said. go right. You know. So, I, you know, I just challenge people. And surround yourself with the right people. Oh, that's well said. You know, without spoiling too much for our big conversation, let me just ask this. You know, it's an interesting convention for you, uh, all your years of attendance. As third vice president, you know, you're in charge of the two high school speakers. Next year, you know, the full rest of the full slate's on you as second VP. Just talk about the ABCA, what it's meant for you as in your coaching career, your development, but then the transition to being part of our, our vice president chain. You come from the Hall of Fame banquet last night, and you get to listen to the seven inductees, and you get to hear their story and their history. And right. Where I always smile is they talk about the first ABCA convention they went to. Absolutely. In Atlanta. Yeah. In Miami. Yeah. In you know, San Francisco. That's right. Yeah. And, and you think back to I was blessed when I started coaching at a young age. I was encouraged and went as a 23-year-old and just loved it. That's awesome. And made a vow. I haven't missed, you yep. know, 27 years, conventions. Love it. Um, whether I had to make the investment That's it. or yeah. you're fortunate enough to get the school to make the investment, yep. it is so worth it. Yep. And, and I've transformed mm-hmm. over the years what I was doing as a 28-year-old to what I'm doing as a 48-year-old. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, believe me. And, you know, but there is – it's just amazing to see the growth. And I always – 
ask people, I don't know how you don't come to this. Sure. I mean, for me, and uh, and it's before the season, so I, I, I do know there's the thought of uh, I want to spend that last yep. weekend at home with my family. Right. And, you know, for at least college coaches, it's, it's this is right before the season. But, you know, fortunately, from Thanksgiving to Christmas, I spent so much time with my family yeah. that – I need this before the baseball season. Right. I go back and I'm, I'm, I'm rejuvenated. I'm competitive. You see the other great coaches and guys in your league and guys that you got to beat in a regional or super regional in Omaha, and it just fires you up. And I, I stand in front of our team and I explain what I just went through every year. Right. I just got back from the coaches' convention. I got to listen to these guys speak. Yep. I was in meetings with these guys. And like I said, it's, it's – I, I appreciate it now more, and I love it more. I, sure. I love the responsibility, being a part of the, the, the vice president meetings, right. being on the board, feeling like I could give back. You know, mm-hmm. Slosh is standing over there and other coaches. I remember when I kind of got – I don't know, you feel like you say you got thrown into it. Yeah. Hey, I nominate Coach McDonald, and you're sitting there going, <laughs> what did he just nominate me for? <laughs> what am I doing now? Yeah, what do I have to do? And, and I grabbed Coach Blankemeyer, and I said, Ed, what, what did you just – what do I have to do now? And, oh, don't worry about it, Dan. You'll love it. And he's right. No doubt. I mean, I don't know, five years ago, I love it. I, right. I love being involved in um, the expo and the, and the youth clinics and obviously the big stage. You, you just had Mike Matheny. Yeah. I mean, I mean, just um, – but from the exhibits. And for me, it's a time to – see the newest products, see the best products. Sure. I mean, it's it's almost not enough time. I mm-hmm. mean, it's it's th- three, four days that fly by. Yes, they do. And I said it last year. I'll say it again, man. And this is – there is no better way to kick off the baseball season uh, than coming to the ABCA every year. And, and this is mm. this is the springboard to, man, I want to try that drill. I want to order that product. Yep. I, I want to connect. I spoke to that coach. Uh, like I always say at our camps, man, we want it to be a springboard. Yeah. The ABCA convention, man, this is a springboard to hopefully a great 2019. Say it louder for the people in the back. I'm going to uh, pray for Dan here real quick because uh, he's going to have to walk back to his hotel room in this uniform, <laughs> and he ain't skirting by nobody. Everybody's going to grab you and, and want to talk to you. But uh, we appreciate what you're doing for the game of baseball, my friend. We're glad you're part of what we're, what we're into. And uh, enjoy the rest of Dallas, Mac. Man, I'm honored to be a part. And, again, let's, let's give thanks to the ABCA because uh, you guys are a big part of helping this game grow. And the work that goes on behind the scenes as, as yeah. we've got to see it yeah. uh, so these coaches can just come and pay a small fee and get the best of the best, man. This is, yeah. a, this is a home run. So kudos to the ABCA. Thank you very much. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you.